What's up guys? We're back in the shop. We're actually only here though to come take out the trash. In today's episode, I actually wanna talk with you guys about something that I think is really important. A couple days ago, I almost got scammed online while buying a car online and I almost lost a lot of money. So I wanna to talk to you guys about that, how that unfolded, and let you guys know the warning signs. Um, that way you can feel more safe buying a car online, but also just not get scammed yourself. I was this close to losing my money. I really don't want this happening to anybody else. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Stay tuned. Really wish Morgan would stop raining. Hi, hey Chelsea. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> we decided on Red Robin for lunch. So a few days ago, I was at home and uh, I was editing and I was answering fan emails and somebody shot me a listing to an eBay listing uh, saying, check out this Nissan GTR. So I opened it up and it looked like this. It's got a bunch of pictures that are clearly from Copart listing. Uh, the guy says in the ad basically that he once in a while buys salvage cars. He says, uh, this is just like what I did with my Mustang, which is interesting, and it's a Nissan GTR. And then he conveniently lists his phone number, which you're not supposed to do on eBay, but somehow he did anyways, lists his phone number for people to reach him. And so I'm sitting here thinking like, wow, this could be a really great deal for a Nissan GTR. Now this car is definitely a too good to be true type of scenario. And the only reason that it's even somewhat believable is because it came from Copart. Now, that's also the same reason I kind of felt like I should really make this video because I'm kind of in the business of preaching you can get these amazing cars for really cheap. $20,000 Aston Martin, $20,000, 20 something thousand dollar Evora, et cetera, et cetera, right? So how much more of a leap is it to get a crash GTR for $24,000? It's really not. It's possible that some guy could really have done this. If a rich guy bought this car, thought he was gonna fix it up, and then about a year later he decided, nah, I don't want it anymore. This could be a really good steal. So I decide mentally, like, I'm going for it. I'm gonna figure this out. And I give the guy a call. He's got his number listed in the thing. I give the guy a call and things start to really fit the profile. He's like, uh, I'm a pilot. I fly across the country all the time. I fly for Emirates. Um, my kid wanted a GTR, but then he changed his mind. He said he wanted an R8. I had an R8, so I gave him my R8. My kid lives in Dubai. So these things are like, actually, you know, as far as backstories go, sounds kind of believable. Like. You're rich, dude, yeah, he might, a rich person might buy this car, let it sit for two years, and you could tell when it was sold on Copart in 2016, it's now 2018, and then decide, ah, I gotta sell it later. So things are actually kind of making sense to me. That was not Red Robin. We're at Ikea now. Chelsea's excited to spend some money. So continuing on with the story, this guy is starting to sound a little bit believable to me, and then I'm like, okay, I'll buy the car from you. So while I'm on the phone with the guy, I go ahead and go through at the eBay auction. I purchase the item. I give the $500 down payment through PayPal, a secured fund source. And I tell the guy, all right, man, I bought it. Here's all I need to continue and give you your money. I want a, uh, a bill of sale and I want a picture of the title and the car. I want a picture of the car. And he, this is where he started messing up. He responds and he's like, Man, if you're gonna start off this whole transaction by acting like I am a scammer or acting like I'm dishonest, like I, like if you want all these pictures of all these things, like I'm not, it's not even worth my time. I have all these other offers. I'm just gonna shut down the auction. I'm gonna I'm gonna refund you your money. I don't I don't want to do this if you're gonna act like that. So I was a little taken back by that, but I let him have his space a little bit, and I just basically said, okay, man, you have your money, you have your down payment through eBay through the website. I've given you your five hundred dollar down payment, like you want. I'll get you your funds within a week. How would you like to do it? So he responds and he's like, uh, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a bill of sale. You're gonna sign the bill of sale, then I'll sign it, I'll send it back to you. And then I'm gonna give you my wire transfer information and you'll start to wire transfer over the money for the vehicle. I'm out of the country for the next three days, but in three days from now, I can either have the car put on a shipping company and I'll ship it to you for free, or you can come get it yourself. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I was like, okay. So at that point right there is when I decided this was probably a scam and it's time to stop everything and do a little bit more research. So at this point I get off the phone with the guy. He's got $500 of my money for deposit and I'm doing more research. So I look up the vehicle's VIN number. I also look up his past history. So remember he mentioned earlier his Mustang he sold on there before. So I look up that Mustang, I look up that Mustang's VIN number. Um, I look up the Copart auction for that Mustang. I find it, it checks out, sold at a reasonable time. The VIN uh, isn't, hasn't gone anywhere unsuspected after that. And then, you know, that's a positive sale history that he has on his thing. When you look at the review, it says he's like a really nice guy. This thing was done in person. So I'm like, wow, maybe this does, maybe this does make sense. 
Then I'm really like, okay, let's j let's dig into the GTR's history a little bit more and check out where that vehicle's been. Because if you've seen it registered like in California and it's driving around, then I know it's not where this guy said he was in Virginia. So that's what I did. I dug up the, the history of the VIN of the GTR. By the way, I wasn't really shopping for a GTR. It's just a really good deal. So I dig that up and I find out that the GTR has never been registered since the day it was wrecked. Since the 2016, it had been sold to a couple different companies, but whoever owns that car in real life hasn't got it back on the road yet. So it's very possible that that guy still had it. So the guy calls me back pretty quickly and he says he wants to get the wire transfer going. He wants to get the ball rolling on this thing. And I'm real upfront with him again. I'm like, hey man, I don't really want to upset you, but um, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be wire transferring you money uh, if if I haven't seen the photos of the car and stuff like that right now. And he's saying, well, I'm out of country for three days, but I have all these other buyers lined up. Um, so I'm just gonna go with another one of them if you don't wanna do this now, because I just wanna take care of it now, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So he's kind of giving me that you know, explanation. So I do a little bit of history on wire transfers while I'm on the phone with them again, or not history, but looking into. Find out that once you wire transfer somebody money, if they scam you, your only recourse you have is to call the cops and then the cops have to handle it from there. Your bank can't get your money back. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at buying an online vehicle. If you wire transfer money, consider it pretty much gone. So he cancels the eBay auction on me, kind of like pressuring me a little bit, but also if he's a scammer, it's a really good way for him to not have to pay the eBay seller fees for selling a vehicle, especially when he hasn't and he probably won't sell the vehicle. It's also just, you know, kind of pressuring me into sending him the money. So I thought about it for a little bit and I was like, man, I could just kind of send this guy some money, uh, but blah, blah, blah. But once I learned about the wires, there's no way of getting your money back. I was like, I'm definitely not doing that. So I told the guy at this point, I was like, listen, man, since you can't get any pictures, you can't get any Anybody over to your house to get pictures you don't have any on your phone etc etc um, what I want to do is I'll just fly down there with cash and I'll give you cash for the vehicle in three days when you're back in the United States then we get the pushback of well I don't want to wait that long I'm just gonna sell it to somebody else after a little bit of going back and forth kind of like that the same type of discussion he finally starts to say okay fine you know what I'll see you in three days uh, and he's essentially broke at this point. I think he's done trying to scam me. He's like, I'll see you in three days. You can come check out the car. We'll do anything you want. And then I'll sell you the car at that point. And I was like, fantastic. Maybe I am actually getting a GTR. A couple minutes later, he calls back and he's like, hey, you know how you gave me a deposit earlier? Um, I'd feel better when he canceled the eBay auction, it refunded my deposit. So at this point, I have all my money back to square one. And, uh, and then what he does is he says, you know, I'd feel a lot better if I did have a deposit. Can you send me a deposit? But I also don't want the fees coming off of uh, PayPal. So you send it via friends and family. That way there are no fees. That also happens to be a way that money isn't uh, guaranteed. You can't get, you can't, it's not easy to get a refund once you've sent somebody money via friends and family. So at that point I was definitely very suspicious and I basically, <laughs> I basically told the guy, uh, if, if you want that deposit, I'll give it to you, but I need more proofs of ID. Go ahead and send me your pilot's license or your badge you used to get into the airport. And at that point, this whole thing was done. The guy was not, uh, definitely not going to send me that cause he didn't have it. I also, I also asked for a driver's license before and the picture of the driver's license really looked like it was just taken right off of the screen of a computer. So at that point, I didn't believe anything and the whole deal was done. Now, let me, let me stress out the point here that if this guy would have had just a picture of the car along with him and would have done a bill of sale over the internet, this would be a pretty standard transaction. That's kind of how you buy a car online. You get a bill of sale, then you get the money together and you wire transfer that person the money and then you go get your car. Normally people aren't gonna start sending their car across the country to you without money first. So like I said, if he would have had a couple more images together and it wouldn't have been that hard to get, I mean, he probably would have had me at that point because he's got the eBay seller history behind him. He's got the picture of the car, the car's VIN checks out, everything kind of checks out. And I probably would have unfortunately sent him some money. So I really wanted to make this video letting you guys know what happened. And here's the things to look out for. Basically, the simplest way to explain this is don't send any unguaranteed money to somebody uh, if, unless you see the car in person in hand and you're right in front of that guy. So for instance, wire transfers, cashier's checks, don't send those through the mail unless you're physically right in front of the car. Cause nowadays it's way too easy to pull the history of a car and make up this fake auction and essentially sell you a car that he doesn't own. A bill of sale from some random stranger for a car that he doesn't own is obviously not worth anything to you, but that's the traditional transferable document that's gonna say, hey, I have this car and I'm now giving it to you and that's why you're giving me money. Ways to send money to people where it can be secured and you can get it back if it's a scam are actually pretty limited. So you got PayPal is a really good one to maybe send somebody a deposit. You could send somebody a check and they could hold on to it and then you could maybe cancel it if it doesn't work out. But the interesting thing is here is getting down to it when you're buying a car on the internet, 
Um, if you're buying it from another private party, do not get scammed. You really need to not be on the internet. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's, it's nearly impossible. I mean, they could FaceTime you with the title and everything and the car in hand. You'd send them the wire transfer and then they could just walk. They could just take your wire transfer and they could leave. Now, the federal government would be after them like they are after this guy. Um, but it's not, I mean, that's, that's not going to get you your money back unless they are, you're so lucky. They find him, they find your money and then they get it back. But the odds of him not sending it out of the country are like slim to none. So realistically, the way that you buy a car over the internet like that from another private party is you don't. You show up there in person, you exchange a title for a car and cash, or a title for cash and a car. You're gonna want both of them, title and the car, you know, normally. And, uh, and that's how you should do the transaction. So with this guy, the way I 100% knew he was a scammer is the next day I looked at his eBay profile and he had posted another car that was just a barely too good to be true listing for a Bentley Continental GT. And that's the one that I posted up on my Instagram and asked you guys to go report him. And luckily we've had his eBay profile completely shut down. His eBay account is completely shut down. And then he sends me like dozens of death threats and everything else like that. So I, you know, contacted the appropriate channels on that one. So that's the story of how I almost lost a bunch of money by getting scammed on the internet. And now you guys hopefully will know a little bit more to look for. And just like as a recap, the idea is just don't send any money that you can't get back in the case of fraud. So don't send anything like a wire transfer or anything else like that unless you are at the point where you're right in front of the guy and you have a title and have a vehicle. Bill of sale means nothing. You never know if that's the person that actually owns the car, et cetera, et cetera. And it also doesn't hurt to call the DMV and make sure that that person that owns the car really owns the car when you're buying it from them, especially if their driver's license name doesn't match the title. So that's what to look for. And if you're hunting down a gem, like I'm always on the lookout, here's how you get them. I've had really good luck finding amazing deals two different ways. One is word of mouth through a friend of a friend, for instance, with the M5. A friend crashed his car, insurance wanted to buy it back. He was willing to sell it to me for the same price that the insurance wanted to buy it back from. That's a really, really good deal normally. So that's one way. The other way, especially if you're looking for a salvage car like I'm normally building, is just to go to one of the companies that I've worked with in the past where you're going to an active auto auction and those companies literally have hundreds of thousands of records of history of successful sales in the past and stuff like that. You know it's a safe place to send your money to. Ikea was good. Chelsea didn't get as much stuff as she wanted. I got more stuff than I wanted. You know how it goes. So uh, one of the reasons I couldn't be in the shop today, pretty much the main reason, other than I needed to spend some time with Chelsea, is I gotta do my taxes. Now, I've been doing them for the last few days. We're getting up to the deadline now, um, and I got my final appointment is tonight. We were supposed to wrap up last night on my day off, but um, unfortunately, we were like there till midnight. Didn't quite get done. So uh, tonight, we're going back and get them done, but first, a beer. a little bit extra on the count that it's tax day and I write the largest check that I ever write all year long today so you know got to do what I got to do Chelsea did not though she's the designated driver you guys point this out every single video oh stepped in a huge puddle damn it on our way to the tax place now I'm gonna let you guys know how it goes I might be oversharing but I'll let you know how it goes back home just finished with my tax meeting it's like 11 o'clock at night but we slid in under the radar. I got my taxes done just, just before the deadline. And um, they were a little bit more than I was expecting, so it's good that I didn't buy a GTR, but uh, we're not totally broke. So I'd say eh, that's a win. So that's a wrap for today, guys. I will see you tomorrow uh, when we're back in the shop. I think I'm gonna try and pull all the rear suspension, the driveline, and all that stuff out of that shell and then get the shell kind of moved around in the shop so we can start to get ready to assemble our frame. I got news that the frame, the tube frame chassis is gonna come on Tuesday. So I'm really excited. And I'll see you guys then. If you wanna support, head over to bsforbuild.com. And if you wanna follow us at more places, find us on Instagram or bsforbuild on there. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Come, come, come.